When the Porsche 963 took its maiden victory last April, it did so despite being the slowest GTP car that weekend in Long Beach. So how did Porsche Penske pull off an upset victory? Let's take a look. In the DPI era, Long Beach was Cadillac territory, with them winning every race. But after practice and qualifying, it was clear Acura would be the ones to beat, with them a second clear of the field in every session. Philippe Albuquerque took pole position in the WTR Andretti Acura, with Tom Blomqvist lining up second for Meyer Shank Racing. Sebastian Bourdais was third in the Ganassi Cadillac, with Porsche starting from 6th and 8th in the 8-car GTP field. Porsche's first piece of luck would come at Turn 1, as chaos unfolded with Bourdais hitting the wall and Blomqvist making contact with a BMW. Nick Tandy in the highest starting Porsche snuck through the mess to jump up to second. Action Express Racing then made the bizarre decision to pit Alexander Sims after just 10 minutes to hand over to Pipo Durrani. This was clearly premeditated as Long Beach was the only race Durrani didn't qualify, but forced them onto a two-stop strategy that was reliant on a well-timed caution which never came. Durrani emerged just in front of race leader Albuquerque, but overtaking is difficult at Long Beach especially when you're trying to pass Pippo, so Albuquerque was forced to sit behind the slower, heavier Cadillac with its fuel tank of fuel. This allowed Tandy to erode the lead Albuquerque had built up in the opening laps, and as soon as the pit window opened, with just under an hour to go, Albuquerque dived in. WTR Andretti took on four fresh tyres, but critically, Ricky Taylor struggled to refire the car losing several seconds in the process. Tandy pitted one lap later, handing over to Matthew Yamane, and this is where Porsche's genius comes into play. Whilst everyone else would take four new tyres, Porsche would keep both cars on the same set of rubber they started the race. As IMSA allows tyre changes during refuelling, this doesn't allow for a shorter pit stop, but with tyre warmers banned, it means that you don't lose time bringing cold tyres up to temperature, which means a much quicker outlap. This time gain allowed the second Porsche of Matt Campbell to jump the BMWs and establish himself as a rear guard to protect Yamane. This was a risky strategy by Porsche. After poor tyre wear at the 1000 miles of Sebring just a month earlier, they were the last team you'd expect to make this gamble. With 50 minutes to go, Yamane led by 5 seconds over the off-strategy Durrani, with Campbell 3rd, Conor Di Filippi's BMW 4th, and Taylor in 5th, 12 seconds back. The 10 car was 10-12 to 12 seconds slower than its rivals in the pits. Had it been a clean stop, they'd have found themselves in 2nd, but now they'd have to fight their way back through the pack. But as previously mentioned, it's hard to overtake at Long Beach. The Acura and BMW had excellent race pace, but in constant GT traffic it was hard for them to take advantage of it. The gap between the top 6 would condense down to 6 seconds when Yamane hit traffic, but then stretch back out to 10 seconds as everyone else got past it in the next couple of laps. Generally though, in the brief spells of clean air, Di Filippi and Taylor were gaining in. With 23 minutes to go, and Durrani having pitted again, Di Filippi finally caught Campbell for a shot at second, but, say it with me now, it's hard to pass at Long Beach, and Connor misjudged the move, taking to the escape road and falling to fourth. Three minutes later, Taylor had closed within a second of Campbell and just four seconds off the lead, and what followed was some of the best racing of the season, as Taylor couldn't quite find a way through. Seriously, if you have 20 minutes, Go watch the end of this race. It was incredible. At any other IMSA circuit, Taylor would have been passed in seconds, but the narrow stop-start nature of Long Beach never meant he quite had a big enough run. It took an audacious move by Taylor with 9 minutes to go to finally steal second, but the time lost as he fought Campbell meant Yamane's lead had grown to over 7 seconds. Porsche Penske had put all their eggs in the no-tyre basket, committing both cars to the bigger picture, 
and it was paying off. Campbell's defensive masterclass had given Yamane double the lead, and the opposition half the time to close it. And close it they would, but not nearly quick enough, until Yamane ran into a gaggle of GT traffic in the tight and narrow first sector with four minutes to go, his lead shrinking from five seconds to half a second in just two laps, as Taylor had a comparatively easier run through them. I might have mentioned that overtaking is actually quite difficult around Long Beach, so with just three laps left it was still advantage Yamane. Taylor committed to the turn one dive on the penultimate lap, misjudged it ever so slightly, and ended up in the wall and out of the race. Had Long Beach been the penultimate race of the season, he probably wouldn't have gone for it. The points lost here arguably cost the 10 crew the title, but in round three of this new era, the focus for everyone was on race victories. Yamane would bring the number six Porsche 963 home for the car's maiden win, on a day where Porsche took advantage of Long Beach's unique characteristics to play a bold strategy gamble that turned them from off the pace to victory lane.